Old Dutch Cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as Old Dutch Cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Nick, I don't understand this. Why did I have to get dressed up like a bobby sock to meet you in front of this candy store? Hey, are you going to buy me a soda, huh? No, Patsy. You're going to sell magazine subscriptions. Sell magazines? Why? To find a pair of killers. Ladies, in case you missed last week's broadcast, here's the news again. Old Dutch Cleanser's popular silverware offer is back. Now you can get four beautiful William A. Rogers A1 Plus quality teaspoons made and guaranteed by Oneida Limited in the lovely Croydon pattern. These teaspoons are pure silver plate, reinforced at wear points, and have a retail value of $4 a dozen. But you can get four of them for just 60 cents and the windmill pictures from two old Dutch labels. And then along with your William A. Rogers teaspoons, you'll get an illustrated folder telling how to build a complete silver service for your table, all at a marvelous bargain price. So send for your teaspoons now. Order as many units of four as you wish. Just be sure to enclose two windmill pictures and 60 cents in coin for each unit ordered. Mail with your name and address to Old Dutch Cleanser, Box U, Chicago 90, Illinois. That's Old Dutch Cleanser, Box U, Chicago 90, Illinois. Price is subject to change without notice. And now, the case of the sunken dollar. Today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. At five o'clock Monday afternoon, a heavy set man and a pretty red headed girl walk down the twisted streets near Maiden Lane and enter the musty shop of Jason Grange, one of the biggest coin dealers in the East. Mr. Grange? Mr. Grange, y'all here in the store? Just one minute, please. Just one minute. It's okay. We're the only ones here. You clients give me a pain. That's what you do. A big, stiff pain. Always coming in at closing time. Never give a man a chance to have dinner. Now, what is it, please? What is it? <laughs> Isn't it the most cunning man in the whole world? Huh? I declare, Daddy told me you were cute, but I never dreamed the famous Mr. Grange would be like this. <laughs> I got half a mind to give you a great old hug and a kiss. <coughs> no, Miss, Miss, please. I'm Sally Ann Mason. You can call me Sally. Mason? Mason? You are related to Colonel Mason of Memphis? I'm his daughter, Mr. Grange. Great collector, Colonel Mason. One of the best. So you're his daughter. Well, well, well. What are you doing in town? Daddy sent me up to buy a coin from you, Mr. Grange. He did, eh? Well, think of that. He wants to buy the 18.4 silver dollar. Well, I never thought he'd get around to it. Uh, price is $10,000, you know. Yes. I brought the cash with me. Cash? Yes. And this is Mr. Brown from the bank. He was sweet enough to chaperone me around the city. Show Mr. Grange the money, Mr. Brown. Got it right here, Mr. Grange, in 500s. Uh, but if you don't mind... I've got the responsibility for this little girl. Uh, could I ask why the coin she's buying is supposed to be worth 10000 Ah, uh, you're interested, eh? Of course. <laughs> oh, wait, I'll take it out of the safe. You can see for yourself. Good. In the year 1804, 19,000 silver dollars were minted, but only three are in existence today. Oh, how's that? Well, the reason is that the coins were shipped north by boat from the mint. The boat was lost at sea. Oh, that so. makes the eighteen four dollar one of the rarest American coins. And here it is. I declare. Isn't it just too cunning for words? Okay, Louis. Sure, Hazel. Wait, 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 what's this? <laughs> Well, Maddie, I hope this is really urgent. You've interrupted three reports and a lab analysis with your hurry-up call. Not to mention making me miss my dinner. Nick, this is really a mess. Murder with assorted trimmings. Oh? Yeah. This is the body of Jason Grange, coin collector and dealer. Murdered about an hour ago. Three bullets, dead center through the heart. 
I see. Well, what are the trimmings? Well, in the first place, Grange was shot with the craziest looking bullets I ever saw. Huh? The medical examiner just extracted them. Here, take a look. Hmm. Conical slug with the point squared off. Yeah, you know what it is? Sure. The square pointed nine millimeter Luger bullet, Matty. It's unusual in this country. What else? Well, whoever murdered Jason Grange stole only one single coin. What? What coin? An antique silver dollar dated 18-4, worth $10,000. Oh, oh, yes, the famous lost dollar. Most of them are supposed to have been lost by shipwreck. Well, how do you know the dollar was the only thing stolen, man? Oh, we checked on that. Checked his stock against his inventory. The only thing we could find missing was that sunken dollar. Sounds logical. Mm -hmm. And here's another trimming. Before Grange died, he scrawled the numbers 1804. In blood on the floor. You see it? Oh, yes. Gets curiouser and curiouser. Yeah. Anything else? Yep, and this'll kill you. Under the counter, we found the corner of a $500 bill. Looks like it was torn off accidentally. Here. Yeah. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, Happen to notice that the engraving is rather fuzzy, Matty? Uh, uh, you got quick eyes, Nick. Took me ten minutes before I noticed what are you two talking about? This is a piece of counterfeit money, Bessie. Can't... Well, Nick, let's see you put it together. Why did the killer only steal the eighteen four dollar when he could have taken a fortune in money and rare coins? And how come the counterfeit five hundred? There's just one answer, Matty. This was murder for advertisement. Murder for what? The killer or killers deliberately murdered Grange to advertise the theft of the eighteen four dollar. Well, how do you figure that, Nick? Well, in the first place, Grange didn't write eighteen four in blood. The killer did. What? Grange was killed with three bullets through the heart. He must have died instantly. Oh. He couldn't have written that date. Why, sure. That's right. The killer wants the world to know that the eighteen four dollar was stolen. Why? So he can sell it. No, I don't think so. Don't overlook the counterfeit money, Bessie. Well, uh, what's that got to do with it? The killer probably got Grange to show him the dollar by flashing phony money and pretending to be interested in buying. But why? If the killer can counterfeit modern money, he certainly can counterfeit an eighteen four dollar. Holy smoke, Nick. You think he's going to counterfeit a whole pack of these sunken dollars? I do. With a theft well advertised, he can sell dozens at $10,000 each, pretending each one is the original stolen dollar. Then what do we do? we got nothing to go on. Oh, Matty, you've got plenty. That Luger bullet is a rare bullet. There aren't many dealers in this city who carry it. No, you're right, Nick. Then get your squad out. Check every dealer. Try to get a line on recent purchases. Right. What about you? I'm going back to the laboratory and do some research into the fine art of counterfeiting. Aren't you ever going to quit? Yeah, I'm almost finished, Betsy. What have you got? Well, I've been through my counterfeiting samples about 20 times. I think I've eliminated all except five of them. Oh, good. Each of those five closely resembled the work on this note. Get our files on counterfeiters, will you? Uh-huh. Ready. First sample, Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall. Jerry Hall, the present serving 20-year term in Atlanta. That lets him out. Hal Moore. Hal Moore. Hal Moore. He's dead. Killed in 45. That gets us down to three. Joe Mitchell. Mitchell. Out on parole, working in Chicago. Maybe Joe's gone back to the old racket. Larry Denby. Alcatraz. Peter Baker. Baker, Baker, Baker. Ah, Peter Baker. At large, this city, last known address, 28 East 2nd. And it's between Pete Baker and Joe Mitchell. Uh-huh. All right, we'll check Joe later. Maybe he's still in Chicago. Right now, we'll run down to 28 East 2nd to see what he can... Oh, the phone. Mm-hmm. Nick Carter's office, Patsy Bowen speaking. Patsy, this is Matty. Got a report for Nick. Oh, just a minute. Nick, it's the sergeant. Right. Yes, Matty? Just finished the check on the Luger bullet, Nick. Only person who bought a 9 millimeter slug in the past six months is a woman. A woman? Yeah. She bought it last week. Couldn't get anything much in the way of a description. She's a pretty redhead, that's all. Huh. All right, Matty, thanks. Maybe I'll have something to report to you in an hour or so. Yes, such as what? I'll know as soon as I've spoken to Pete Baker. What time is it, Louie? Louie, put down that magazine. Huh? What'd you say? What time is it? One o'clock. 
Hey, Ooh. Pete. Pete Baker. Yeah? How much longer, Grandpa? Just a couple of minutes, Hazel. Well, hurry it up. You know, Hazel, you sound like a pretty cute kid when you put on that southern accent of yours. Yeah? You mean you don't like me this way? Oh, sure, sure. You better. Hey, Grandpa, I'm tired waiting. All right, all right. First time I ever made Moe's for old-fashioned dough like this dollar. You better do better with that than you did with them phony 500s we flashed on Grange. Thought the old boy was going to get wise they were so bad. You got a nerve talking like that to the best engraver and molder in the business. Yeah, maybe okay, was one. okay, okay, okay. Just get those molds finished and Just we'll... Just about finished now. Wait a minute. Aim to cast them silver dollars and sell them? Yeah. Worth much? Ten grand each, Grandpa. And it's safer in passing regular dough. If the guy that buys an eighteen four dollar finds out it's a phony, he can't squawk. He's already bought stolen goods. <laughs> That's pretty smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, there we are. Yeah. Beauties, ain't they? Uh, best job ever done. Let's see. Won't be able to tell a coin cast from this mole from the real thing. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, wrap them up, Louie. And let's get out of here. Uh, just a minute, folks. Five grand was the price for making them moles. You don't take them unless you get paid. <laughs> he wants to be paid. Hmm. Pay him, Louie. Okay, Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> This is 28 East 2nd, Patsy. Come on. Uh-huh. Oh, I feel as though I'm walking in my sleep. It's only a little after one. We'll be finished soon. Take a look at the sign on the door. It says this building's been condemned. Yeah, so I see. And we're out of luck, huh? Not necessarily. Unfortunately, it's not unusual for people to have to live in a condemned building until it's actually torn down. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Certainly be an ideal place for a hideout. All right, we'll see what we can find anyway. Mm-hmm. Golly, it's dark as pitch in here. Get my flashlight out. There, it's better. Oh, Nick, this place looks deserted. Maybe. This apartment's certainly empty. So's this one. Oh, this is a wild goose chase, Nick. Oh, wait, there are a couple of empty milk bottles outside that door down the hall. Oh, they've probably been there for months. That's so fast, Betsy. I can't afford to jump to conclusions. Let's take a look in that apartment anyway. Okay. There's some furniture in here, Nick. Oh, I see. Nick, you smell that perfume? Somebody's been in here recently. Yes. The smell is too strong to be very old. Uh Uh-oh. Oh, Nick. Is that Peter Baker there on the floor? Yes. And he's very dead. In the glare of the flashlight, Pete Baker's body is outlined, sprawled on the cluttered floor. Swiftly, Nick inspects the dingy room. Having discovered Pete Baker's body on the floor of his room, Nick examines the dead man closely. Hmm. Two bullet wounds in the chest. Body's still warm. Hmm. That see, Baker was killed only a few minutes ago. Nick, that perfume we smelled. Maybe the woman who wore that perfume killed him. Possible. I wonder if there's anyone else living in this house who might have seen or heard anything. Well, there's one way to find out, Nick. Yeah, I'll see what I can find in here. While I do that, suppose you go through the building. Cover every apartment. Right. See if you can find anyone who heard shots about five minutes ago and what they did about it if they did. Nick, I've been to every apartment in the building. What did you find? Nothing. They're all empty. You find anything? I did. There was a woman in here with Baker. I found this long red hair. Oh. I think there was a man with her. Why do you think that? Found the cigar butt under that chair. Probably where he sat. See all the cigar ashes on the floor there? Yeah, but couldn't Baker have left it there? No, I doubt that. Baker smoked a pipe. Still there on the floor where he dropped it when he was shot. Yeah. Nick, what do you think happened? Baker must have been making a mold for them. Uh Uh-huh. His blowtorch and crucibles and other apparatus are still warm. Nick! Could he have been making a mold of the 1804 dollar, do you suppose? Very likely, the way this case ties together. When he finished it, they killed him and then walked out. Yeah. You through here now, Nick? Yeah, I think so. Look 
Call Matty and go home and get some rest. Okay, Nick. Here's the final report from the lab. Fine, Matty. Let's have it. Well, you figured it out just about right. There apparently was a man and a woman in the place with Baker, and she was a redhead. And chances are she's the same redhead who bought the Luger bullets. My Joe, Matty. I've forgotten about that. No, when we got the man's prints with the woman wore gloves. Did you identify the man? Yeah, we checked the prints he left on this magazine, Nick. He's Louis Larkin, hijacker, gunman, and all-around crook. Two terms in the state pen. Uh, here's his file photo. Oh. That helps. Yeah. Hey, what's this slip of paper in the magazine, Matty? Something of yours? Yeah, huh? No, no, just an ad the dealer must have stuck in before he sold it. Says if you want your newspapers forwarded to you while you're on vacation, leave your name at the store. Matty, mm. you say you found Larkin's prints on this magazine? Yeah. Look at the dateline. What? This magazine was put on the stands only yesterday. Yeah? How does that help? Let me see the name on this ad. Oh, Roger's Candy Store, 100 Park Road. So what? Oh, Matty, don't you see? That's the store this magazine came from. Well, what was it doing in Baker's place then? Hey, that's right. Park Road is way across town from where Baker lives. Sure. Maybe Baker didn't buy the magazine. Maybe Louie or the girl bought it. Yeah. Maybe Louie and the girl are hiding out somewhere near this Rogers candy store. That's what I was thinking. Well, if they are, Patsy and I will find them. <laughs> Bags packed yet? Yeah, just, just now finished, Hazel. I've been going over the list of coin collectors, Louie. Got a nice schedule worked out. Yeah? And we hit Chicago first. There are three collectors there. Ten grand each makes 30 grand. Yes, well. <laughs> In St. Louis, Cleveland, New Orleans, El Paso, L.A., Frisco, and Seattle. The way I figure it, we'll split 300 grand. Easy. Yeah, we sure should. <laughs> Pretty cheap for knocking off a couple of punks, huh? You said it, Hazel. You remember to get the train tickets yesterday? Oh, sure, sure. They're on the dresser there in the envelope. Right. Yeah, I gotta hand it to myself, Louie. It's a foolproof racket. Some of these collectors are crazy guys. If they're daffy enough, they don't mind buying rare coins, even when they know they're stolen. <laughs> what I like about it is that they gotta keep it secret because they're buying stolen goods. <laughs> they gotta cover up for us. That's <laughs> yeah, foolproof, Louie. One hundred percent full. Hey. What's the matter? Comes the window quick. No? Down on the corner in front of the candy store. Yeah. See that tall guy standing there with magazines under his arm? Yeah, I see him. That's Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Yeah. Puzzle up with that packet, Louie. Let's get out of here. Yeah, I'll say. Maybe Carter's around just by accident, or maybe he's on to us. Either way, we're taking no chances. Not for 300 grand and a murder rap, we ain't. <laughs> I got here as soon as I could, Nick. Do I look enough like a bobby soxer for you? Oh, you look fine. Well, I still don't understand. Why do I have to get dressed up like a bobby soxer and meet you here in front of Roger's candy store? Hey, you gonna buy me a soda, huh? No. You're going to sell magazine subscriptions. Uh, I am? Yes. Why? In order to find a pair of killers. Okay, Nick, give with the plan. Well, you remember, one of them left a magazine at Pete Baker's workshop and I traced it to this candy store? Yes. The proprietor says he's sure the man who bought it lives in that house across the street. But he doesn't know who he is or in what apartment he lives. And so I'm going to sell subscriptions from apartment to apartment until I find him. Right. His name is Louis Larkin. Here's his picture. Hmm. No beauty, is he? And there may be a red-headed girl with him. The one with the perfume. I'll remember the perfume. Now listen, Patsy. Just find out where they're located. Don't try anything else. They're a little too dangerous to play with. <laughs> Uh, good morning, sir. I represent the All States Magazine. Beat it. Well, that wasn't Louis Larkin. <laughs> no perfume yet. Hey, 
Good morning, madam. I represent the Universal Mag... Uh, and which is helping me work my way through college by the sale of magazines in which I'm sure you won't be interested. Well, why shouldn't I be interested in literature? Um, Come on in, honey. Come in. Well, uh, the All States Magazine Company publishes... I thought you said Universal. Huh? Oh, yes. Yes, I represent both. I, uh... I, uh... <laughs> I tell you what. I left my subscription blanks down in my car. Yes. Wait till I get down and get them. Grab and I'll... Oh, Lois. Oh! You're Nick Carter's girl, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we saw you chewing a rag downstairs. Hey, Hazel. Carter's up to us. He knows we bumped Baker and Grange, and he knows we're here. You're not telling me anything. Well, what do we do? I'm thinking. Okay, so while you're giving the think tank a workout, I'll take care of this chick. <laughs> Take it easy, sister. All I do is pull the trigger, and you won't feel hardly nothing at all. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> Patsy struggled helplessly as Louis Larkin aims his Luger automatic at her heart. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, please listen carefully, for here's how to send in for the four lovely William A. Rogers A1 Plus Quality Teaspoons Old Dutch Cleanser is offering. Order as many units of four as you wish. Just be sure to enclose two windmill pictures from Old Dutch labels and 60 cents in coin for each unit ordered, and then mail with your name and address to Old Dutch Cleanser, Box U, Chicago 90, Illinois. That's Box U, Chicago 90, Illinois. And remember, besides the four lovely William A. Rogers teaspoons in the beautiful Croydon pattern, you'll receive an illustrated folder that tells how to build up a complete matching service at a sensationally low cost. So, ladies, don't delay. Send for your four teaspoons now. Remember, enclose two windmill pictures from Old Dutch Labels and 60 cents in coin, and mail with your name and address to Old Dutch Cleanser... Box U, Chicago 90, Illinois. Price is subject to change without notice. Send now. And now for the conclusion of the case of the sunken dollar. Today's adventure with Nick Carter brought to you by Old Dutch Cleanser. As Louis Larkin's finger tightens on the trigger of his automatic and Patsy struggles helplessly, Hazel suddenly knocks the gun aside. Cut it out, Louis. (laughs) Everyone in the house would hear the shot. You wouldn't stand a chance. You mean we'll let this dame go? We'll take her with us to run interference. Well, Carter will be too busy looking for the girl to worry about us. Yeah, maybe he won't. And he'll be too busy worrying about the girl to make a move. She's like a hostage, Louie. Get it? Yeah. While Carter's watching the front door, we're going out the back way. Take a cab to the station. Well, what about the dame? Stop worrying. But we can't take... Look, Louie, we've got a compartment on the train. And somewhere along the way, we'll push her out the window. With a bullet in her head. Okay, Hazel, but I think you're nuts to do it. Shut up, Louie. Let her go. <clears throat> now, look here, you... And you listen to me, sister. One false move and Louie lets you have it here and now, understand? Uh, I understand. We might as well burn for three murders as for two. <laughs> There's a hat coming, Hazel. Hey, Taxi! Hatching! Get him, honey. Okay. The train terminal driver. And will you please close the glass partition? I'm awfully cold back here. Terminal? Okay, lady. I'll close the glass. Okay, we made it. Carter will wait for the girl to come out, maybe ten minutes. Then he'll start looking. Yeah, and <laughs> he won't find nothing. <laughs> what a laugh. Yeah. We'll take the first train out. Hey, maybe they don't go to Chi. We can always get to Chi later. Maybe we'll start on the West Coast for now, huh? It's okay with me. The further from Carter, the better. Look. Look, I'll make a bet with you. One hundred dollars to one cent that you don't get away from Nick. We've already got away, sister. Is it a bet? It's a bet. (laughs) Only trouble is you won't be around to collect even if you win. (laughs) (laughs) Hey. Where are we? What's he stopping for? This isn't anywhere near the terminal. Step right out, lady. Let me help you with your bags. Mr. Oh, we all don't want to get out here. I said the train terminal. This isn't the terminal. You're crazy. What is this place? Police headquarters, Louis. What? What'd you say? Don't move. Come on, Patsy, you get out first. Okay, Nick. Nick? Nick Carter? Yes, Hazel. My name is Nick Carter. I will just pile out of this cab, luggage, gun, mules, and all, and walk quietly into headquarters. 
Sergeant Matheson wants to talk to you about some assorted thefts and murders. Call out, please. Oh, uh, before I forget, one cent, please, Hazel. I not only win the bet, I'm here to collect. Ah, oh, it was a beautiful job, Nick. Beautiful. But there's just one thing I don't figure. What's that, Matty? How in blazes did you know enough to get around to the back street and borrow that cab? I have ears, haven't I? I heard Hazel and Louie making their plans. But huh? You heard them? How? I was outside the apartment door. You don't think I'd let you walk into that murderous den alone, do you? I was right behind you all the way. You were right behind me? Yes, Betsy. Then why didn't you bust in and capture those two crooks right then and there? Didn't want to take any chances on anyone in a crowded apartment house being hit by stray bullets. But they might have killed me before they left. Patsy, you may be sure that I waited until I knew they were going to take you with them before I did what I did. What? Say, that was quite an act. Oh. All state magazines, <laughs> universal magazines. You, you didn't trust me to do it all by myself. You, <laughs> Oh, you treat me just like a baby. No, Patsy. I hate you, you... You mere man. Now, Patsy, easy. <laughs> you know, if it comes to that, how come you were so positive Nick could get Hazel and Louie? Oh, I heard all about the bet. A hundred dollars to one cent. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah, you were betting on a sure thing yourself now, weren't you? You knew Nick was the cab driver. Well, I did not. I never recognized him. Then how come the bet? Because I knew I could trust Nick, which is more than he can say for me. But, Patsy... If I hadn't followed you to protect you, I wouldn't have been able to win that bet for you. Well, oh, oh, all right, you win. Heaven knows you always do. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time and over these same stations by the Cudahy Packing Company, makers of Old Dutch Cleanser. Remember, when you go shopping tomorrow, get the cleanser preferred by more women in America than any other. Old Dutch Cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.